ಶ್ರೀನಂತ ವಿಶ್ವೇ ಅಮೃತಸ್ ಪುತ್ರ ಆಯೇಧಮಸ್ತು ವೇದಾಹಮೇತ ಪುರುಷ ಮಹಾಂತ ಆದಿತ್ಯವರ್ಣ ತಮಸ ಪರಸ್ತ ವಿದಿತ್ತೋತಿ ಮೃತ್ಯು ಮೇತಿ ನೈನ್ನ ಪಂಥ ವಿದ್ಯತೀಯ ನೈನ್ನ ಪಂಥಾಯ ನಾಯ ವಿದ್ಯತಿ here oh children of immortal bliss and the celestial beings who live above i have seen that a fallen one who is beyond darkness knowing him alone one can transcend death there is no other way there is no other way om shanti 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 peace 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 people this morning our subject is thoughts on the gita part 16 we are studying the bhagavad gita sixth chapter which is called dhyana yoga chapter on meditation krishna systematically instructed arjuna how to meditate very specific instruction sit in solitude be alone select a pure place have a comfortable seat sit erect focus between the eyebrows watch your food rest and work control the mind like the flame of a lamp in a windless place thus you will get the blissful touch of brahman very clear instruction and this the wonderful instruction is free hmm? you see nowadays many teachers are selling meditation technique yoga technique and charging money in seminars in workshop in retreat sometimes people do not pay value if they get something free the thing which is not very valuable or important or precious if you pay a very fancy dress in a cheap discount store you do not pay any value but see, um, very bad dress if you buy in a very fancy shop you give a lot of money you give value to it that is the way the world functions now it is there are some very popular speakers who teach meditation technique positive thinking i was reading their some of their books deepak chopra wayne dyers oof Oprah Winfrey, Joel Austin, they are very popular in this country at present. And they have large following. They are more well known than Krishna and Ramakrishna. And this is the age of publicity. This internet, you can find anything you want. meditation japa everything please remember krishna and ramakrishna's instructions are infallible they are yogishwar the lord of the yogis and their teachings are immortal regarding spiritual life in the very beginning it is a very difficult 
to start. Agre Bishamiva Pore Omritokam. Sometimes I give this illustration. When you have malaria, you will have to swallow quinine mixture, quinine tablets. They are extremely bitter. But it will take away your fever, your disease. Similarly, this meditation and spiritual instructions of these great teachers are in the beginning very discomfortable, not very palatable. But if you practice them, you will see the result. It will totally transform your life. That is the way spiritual life works. Do something. We shall start verse 24, chapter 6. Sankalpo Prabhavan Kaman Tektva Sarvana Shishataha Manusev Indriya Gramam Viniyam Samantataha Krishna says, abandoning without reserve all desires born of Shankalpa and completely restraining by the mind alone the whole group of senses from their objects in all directions. <clears throat> Sometimes people say, Swami, the moment we sit for meditation, all kinds of bad thoughts come to our minds. Mind become more restless during meditation than when I'm cooking or doing other works. Why? That is the question. You see, other times when you are cooking or vacuuming or doing all sorts of work, at that time your mind is not disturbing you too much. But the moment you sit for meditation, you see all kinds of thoughts come to your mind. The reason is, at that time, you are trying to throw them out. And they resist. That we are staying with you last 40, 50, 60 years, and now you want to make us homeless? What is the matter with you? I am living with you in your mind all these years. At that time, they resist. They resist. That is a good sign. That means you are making progress. So don't feel bad when you sit for meditation and all kinds of thoughts come to your mind. And that is the time you must struggle and fight. That he is talking about. Shankalpa and Prabhavan Kaman. All this Kaman, desires comes from Shankalpa. Resolution, resolve. Ignorance is the background. Without ignorance, no desire can arise. At that time, they come up. Shankalpa means Shobhanadyash. It is a beautiful word. Shobhanadyash, do you know what? I love to have it. Suppose in the window display, if you go to Rodeo Drive in, in Los Angeles, <laughs> in Beverly Hill, all in the, their showcases, if you see them, the wife will tell her husband, I like to have that dress or I like to have that shoe. Then they go inside and buy it. That is called Shobhanadash. The moment you see, you get attracted and you want to buy it. That is called Shankar, resolution. Resolve, mind resolves. I want to have it. Krishna says, approach those Shankalpa from the mind. If you really want to meditate, have contentment. Don't create too many only desires. Kamu mayu vayam purusho shayata kamu bhavuti tat krutur bhavuti yat krutur bhavuti tat karmu kurte yat karmu kurte tat aksham paddhati. Brother Nukubunishad tells us, 
Kamamayam Purusha, all these human beings you see, they have desires. And those desires help them to move. If they have no desires, they will be lured. <laughs> so what do they do, these desires? Go to. As I told you, the moment that desire comes, I want to have it. Then comes action. From action comes the result. You resolve that I must go to Vedanta Temple at 10.30. That resolution forces you to go to the car, drive the car, come here, and listen to the lecture. It is all comes from desire. Good desires, some desires are bad. Desires also, I'm just explaining how the desires work. There are three kinds of desire. Desire for name and fame, desire for progeny, children, or sex, and desire for money. These three desires are controlling this whole universe. You think about yourself, you will find all desires are within these three desires. You might have innumerable hundreds, thousands of desires, but all are incorporated in these three desires. <coughs> How to get rid of these desires? The Upanishad tells us there are four signs I am going to tell. Akamu, Nishkamu, Aptokamu, Atmokamu Va. Akamu means I do not have any desire for external things. That is called Akamu. Mind is not going outside to have something, to possess something. Nishkamu means all my desires from my heart have been cleared, uprooted. That is called Nishkamu. Aptokamu means the, all desires are fulfilled. Here is a pitcher full of water. As Sri Ramakrishna said, if you put an empty pitcher inside the water, Bug, 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 some sound comes. When the picture is full, it doesn't make any more noise. That is called aptokamo. I am full. I have no more desires. And atma kamo means the person who only desires the atma and nothing else. How these people explain this desire, how they are functioning in our mind. Very interesting. Who goes for desire? Mind. Mind is all the time running around. Through the senses, mind goes out. Mind is just like the queen bee. Where the queen bee goes, all bees follow the queen bee. So if your mind goes toward God, all of your senses will go toward God. Amazing how the senses Follow the mind all the time. Because mind is the king of the senses. Your eyes, your ears, your nose, your mouth, all this, your touch, all these things will follow the mind. In whatever direction you will put the mind, all senses will go to that direction. Just like a queen bee. Sometimes some we know some mystics, Christian mystics, they try to torture the body. body. They think by torturing the body, I can torture the mind. It does not work. It will never work. My mind is full of desires, and I'm telling you, oh, I shall, I shall make myself blind, I shall make myself deaf, I shall kill all my senses. It will not work. The problem is in the mind. But Krishna is talking about, look, this is the mind I'm explaining to you and how it functions, how it works. Most of the people are not aware of their minds and their functions. They're guided by the senses. Shankara says, Jitam jagat kena mono hi jena. Who has conquered the world? He who has conquered the mind. Very clear. It 
in the third chapter of the Kathu Upanishad, mind is compared to the reins. That it is called analogy of the chariot, which was taught by Yama to Nochiketa in the Kathu Upanishad. Here is the chariot. This is the body. Mind is the reins. The charioteer is the buddhi, intellect. Mind is the rain. Horses are the senses. If the horses try to go wrong direction, mind will pull. No, go this direction. This is my destination. Whole thing is in the mind. Next verse. Shana ishana yuparamed buddhya dhriti grihitaya atma sangastam manakritvana kinchido ki chintayet. With the reason of our intellect joined with will, with the mind fastened on the self, let one attain quietude step by step. Let him or her not think of anything else. Shanai, shanai. Slowly, slowly. Don't hurry. Don't force. It will not work. Slowly, slowly, you will have to work. I remember one of our Swamis told me when I joined the monastery at the age of 22, well, your mind went in this way 22 years. You will have to reverse this another 22 years. But if you have sincerity, you can make quick progress. You will not have to wait for 22 years. Sometimes if you force, you may get disease. Meditation, sometimes. I'm telling you how it brings disease. A person was practicing, he's a householder, he has a cloth shop in South Calcutta. He was practicing nearly two, three hours a day pranayama. And then he developed some kind of chest pain. He cannot bear any sound. And then his body started to shake. Hands, head started to shake. So he invited me to his house, I went. And I told him, my goodness, what are you doing? It will kill yourself. You do one thing, see next six months, no meditation, no spiritual disciplines, no pranayama. Only eat and sleep and walk. First bring your system in a normal state. If you force it, it will react. It is just like a water hose. Water is on, if you press it, it will burst some place, weak point of that hose. Do not force. Sometimes if you want to control a running horse, you have to go to a distance and then, then slowly, slowly, slowly you will stop it. Go to the airport. When the plane lands, it goes with nearly 150, 200 miles of speed the moment it touched, touches down the, 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 the runway. And it goes, and then the pilot reverses the engine, and then slowly, slowly he presses the, the, the brake. The moment it lands, if it gives the brake, boom, the whole plane will be upside down. Slow, we, 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 don't, we don't make too fast. Some people want to change overnight. It does not work that way. <laughs> Sri Ramakrishna gave another beautiful illustration. When the robbers attacked a house, the police, you know, they do not stop them because then they will be killed, they will be murdered. At that time, their energy in full swing and they have tremendous concentration. They are going to attack and rob. 
The moment they rob, and they're, they're very happy when they come out from the house, at that time, police go and, and, and arrest them. But Sri Ramakrishna said, similarly, when the move emotion is up, just wait and see. Slow. Sometimes I give this illustration that Russian weightlifter I saw in Olympic, in Montreal Olympic. My goodness, he 650 pounds, boom, he lifts. And he said, my wife feeds me well. He eats in the morning two dozen scrambled eggs, two dozen eggs. My goodness, I saw in the kitchen, they're showing how this food is prepared. Shh. You can take two eggs and he takes two dozens. <laughs> His body needs that kind of food. Otherwise he cannot lift this kind of weight. I'm just telling you, practice. He did not learn to lift 600 pounds on the first day, 200, 250, 300. In this way, slowly, slowly increases. If you go to the gym, you see how the weight lifters do. They increase the weight slowly, slowly, slowly. Same thing in meditation. Shonai, <laughs> shonai. Upurame buddhya dhriti ghir grihitaya. Buddhya dhriti grihitaya. Have patience. Have patience. Don't get upset. Shumi Prabhupananda introduced three times meditation in Hollywood and Santa Barbara and Trubuku. All monks and devotees would come to meditate three times a day. 6.30 to 7.30, 12 to 1, 6 to 7. He said, he has his own philosophy, but if you come three times, you will form a habit. Suppose a couple of times you could not, you, were, you did not have good concentration. At least one time if you get concentration, that experience will give you intoxication. And that intoxication will help you to meditate long hours. It will give you recollectedness of God. That is the way it works. But here, some people do not have patience. I sometimes make joke. The America destroyed its patience when they discovered Instant coffee. <laughs> Everything they want instant, right now. It does not work that way. This is Buddha Dhriti Grihitaya. Hold the intellect with great patience. Then what next? Then just put your mind on the self, on the Atman, on God. Then stop thinking. This is called Asam Prajnata Samadhi. Where mind just stops. Mind stops. That means the world stops. When the mind becomes mindless, this duality is not perceived, says Manju Kokarika. Duality vanishes when mind stops. So every day when you sit for meditation, try to stop the mind. Partially stop the mind on the self, not in sleep. Atma <laughs> samastha. Just 
if one of our Swamis gave a beautiful illustration, the difference between contemplation and meditation. Contemplation means a bee is buzzing on the flower and just moving its wings, but it has not yet sat on the, on the, on the flower. That is contemplation. It is contemplating. And meditation means the bee sat on the flower and began to see honey, which is completely absorbed. That is the difference between contemplation and meditation. So he is meditating, which is deeply absorbed in the Atman and forgot the external world. There is a, we find, first we feel drowsy, then we a little sleep, then a little dream, then deep sleep. Similarly, bring the sense organs in the mind, from mind into the ego, from the ego to the cosmic intelligence, and finally into the Atman. Only know the Atman. Do not talk worldly things. This is the breeze of immortality. We need patience. The one Upanishad says, do you know what kind of patience you need? As if holding a, a kushu grass, you are trying to dry the ocean taking a little drop of water, and that, that kind of patience you need. Some people do not know how to give the rest to the mind. If an engine all the time works, the engine, there is, there is called metal fatigue. Even the airplane, the, the international flight, they keep several hours after flying for 10 hours, 12 hours, 14 hours, they keep to the plane in the airport for several hours so that it gets rid of that metal fatigue. Similarly, his mind needs good rest. Then it will function well. Even some people go to, we, some people, those who have too much worries and anxiety, they take wrong sleeping pills, they force their mind to get rest. You will not have to force. That comes through meditation. If you know how to meditate well, your mind will get good rest. Sometimes when people come and tell me, Swami, I'm very upset this and they come. First I tell them, think that this world is Maya, which is not real. Your problems are not also not real. I, one of our swamis was writing diary at 12 o'clock. So I went to his room, uncle, why are you writing diary? Then he told me, do you know why I'm writing diary? One week ago, something happened. And I wrote in my diary, I was very upset. And now seeing that entry, I am now smiling. Such a petty matter, I just became upset. This tells me that this world is not real. It is continuously changing. My mind is changing. I do not pay that much importance anymore to that matter. How this mind works. Next verse. Yato yato nisharati manaschanchalam asthiram through whatever reason, the restless, unsteady mind wanders away. Let one, carving it from that, 
bring it under the subjugation of the self alone. <clears throat> I sometimes watch the pure mind and the impure mind. Pure mind, perhaps here is some kind of clay, very good clay. You throw on the on the on that lump of clay on the wall, it will stick there. That is the sign of a pure mind. An impure mind, that clay with full of rocks and sand. You same lump of clay with that you just throw on the on the wall, it will fall. It will not stick there. Why? Those rocks and sands are there, they're not real clay. So the yogi's mind is so pure, whenever they throw on the chosen age, it just sticks there. It does not move around. That means that mind is pure. Sometimes watch, when you sit for meditation, watch. Who is disturbing my meditation? Even you, you will see it. Immediately you see these are the persons or these are the things are disturbing my mind. Human beings are not stupid. <laughs> How to control? In India, when a girl is married, very bashful, very shy, goes to her husband's home. Before marriage, she has no veil. She is moving around, running around. She is completely free. The moment she is married, she has to go to her husband's home and go and she is under control of the family. It is hard. She becomes very uncomfortable and restless to go out. But the society, the family, the tradition won't let her out. What happens at that time to that newly married girl? She stays inside the house and develops love for her husband and establishes a strong relationship with the husband. At that time, she stays at home. At that time, her outgoing tendencies go away. It is a matter of habit, how you will handle your mind. There is a story, a man was in jail in China. 30 years, he was in a dark dungeon. During the time of the king's coronation in China, all prisoners are released. After 30 years, when he came out and saw the bright sun and the beautiful external world, he cried out, I cannot bear it. I cannot bear it. Please put me back into cell, into the dark cell. I loved that place. I cannot bear the light. Just see how mind works. He cannot bear freedom. He cannot bear light. The mind, whatever shape you will give to the mind, mind will take that shape. Sri Ramakrishna said, Mon dhupa gharer kapo. Je ronge chupa be, she ronge chupbe. Mind is just like the cloth of a washerman's house. He has many tubs with different color. Whatever color you want, he will dip your cloth in that color. And it will take that color. So is the mind. If you want to give spiritual color to your mind, it will, get, it will take a spiritual color. Worldly color, it will get worldly color. It is up to you. The mind is yours. Your mind is not mine and my mind is not yours. You are the owner of your mind. So you decide what you want to do with this mind. Same thing your body. Yato yato nisharati manas chanchalam asthiram asthiram Very restless mind. Krishna will talk about it later coming. That so Arjuna will complain how difficult it is to control this restless mind. Mm -hmm. 
if you practice your meditation in the morning and evening daily slowly slowly your tamas and rajas will diminish and your sattva quality will increase you will get more peace of mind more joy more happiness mental health sometimes we see so many sick people in the society mental sickness one fifth of the population in this country they take they have some kind of mental problems what a huge 20% of the people and how much money and treatment go spent for these people how to make the mind healthy krishna is talking one after another in these verses the second advice is given in the universe and you all need it whenever the mind goes out whenever the mind very fickle never steady restless goes out then and there control it bring it under the atman alone this is the constant struggle a war for a long period it has to go on there is no other way but krishna will say later that on at the question of arjuna the mind is controlled by constant practice that will be one of the questions arjuna which is also everyone's which arjuna's ask on our behalf later in the gita next verse प्रशात मनस योगिन सुखमुतम उपैति शांतराजस ब्रह्मभूतम कालमश वेरीली दि सुप्रीम ब्लिस कम्स टू दैट योगी अ पर्फेक्टली ट्रांक्विल मैंड विथ पैसिंग क्वाइटिट्यूड क्वाइट विथ पैशन क्वाइटेड ब्रह्म बिकम एंड फ्री फ्रॉम चेंज shanto rajasam these words are very very beautiful shanto rajasa rajasam rajas means activity restlessness stopped second prashant manasam the mind is calm if restlessness stops mind becomes calm third akalmasham the mind becomes free from sin brahmabhutam it is absorbed in god then that yogi attains happiness these four adjectives krishna put before the yogi before one can attain happiness happiness is there real happiness in a spiritual life i believe there is no happiness people who do not practice spiritual disciplines those who meditate if you see their eyes you can see it why he was interviewing one swami in lucknow some years ago and he told me the time met swami joginwa who was mother's attendant when i used to watch her eyes i could see those eyes are constantly meditating she is cutting vegetables she is doing homework but her her eyes if you see yoginma's eyes it is meditative eyes if you see watch shami vivekananda's eyes this eyes are not seeing <laughs> like us this external world she is very indrawn that he is talking about prashant manasam shant rajasam akalmasam brahma bhutam when the mind becomes absorbed what jee shri ramakrishna says dimetadich 
when the mother bird sits on the eggs on her egg, he hatches. She hatches the egg. Her eyes are vacant, looking outside. But it, her whole concentration on is on her egg. Dime tadich. He to ask him, could you make a picture like that? He could not make it during Sri Ramakrishna's lifetime, but later he made it. He would see that Ramakrishna, sorry, M's biography, which I have written, I put that picture there, which is in the front, which is on the cover, which is also inside of the book. That M, M's that picture, which he drew, makes he drawn for for himself because Master told him. Dime tadich. His eyes are open, but not seeing there is anything outside. That is means Brahma Bhutam, mind is absorbed in God, in Brahma. At that time, he is really getting peace and bliss and joy. Uttamam Shukham. He gets a lot of peace and joy and happiness. The Upanishad tells, tells us that when a raindrop falls into the ocean, it becomes the ocean. So when the mind becomes absorbed in God, it becomes one with God. Next verse. Junjan evam sadatmanam yogi bigata kalmashaha sukhina brahma samasparsham uttantam sukhamashnuti a yogi, freed from all taints, constantly engaging the mind, thus attains with ease the infinite bliss of contact with Brahman. When we connect our mind with God, what happens? Yogi bigoto kalmosha. Kalmosh means all chains, impurities, sins, bigato, goes away. Sri Ramakrishna says, if, if the room is dark for a thousand years, if you bring the light, do you think it comes slowly? No. Instantly the whole room can be lighted. So all the impurities which in your heart, if you bring God, Atman, Brahman, it will be clean, it will be lighted in no time. <clears throat> These are the results of meditation. <clears throat> but what shall I gain from meditation? Sparsha. We love to get touch of our beloved. Both in physical plane, in mental plane, in the spiritual plane. The people who loves you, when you get that person's touch, you feel good. Same thing in meditation, when you get this touch of God, you, at that time, do you know what happens? You don't want to leave the shrine. If somebody calls you, you become very disturbed. Why are you disturbing me? I am so happy. That thing happens. That means you are getting some taste of, of meditation. <clears throat> Once 1st of January 1886, Sri Ramakrishna touched on the Kalpataruji to some devotees. Simply touch. And they got ecstasy, samadhi, vision. Just mere touch. That is called Brahma Sangasparsham. He to touch 440 electric motor, your body will be saturated, you will be electrified in no time. 
Of course, that can bring death. <laughs> Religion is trust, not talk. Perhaps you have seen when the Catholics, when the Pope came, I saw many Catholics want to touch his hand or kiss his ring. Why? In this, you know, it is in every tradition. We try to touch some holy people. When Christ was walking, people want to touch him. But if I touch him, I will be cured from disease, this and that. You see, that is the tradition. In India, there you will find some people touch holy people's feet. That means that this person's body is very pure, spiritual, so that I may, I may get some spirituality from this person. That is the reason they bow down. In America, they shake hands. In India, they bow down. See, in a shaking hand, you have a still ego, but when you bow down, your ego is less. Junyan nevam sadatmanam yogi vigata sukhina brahma samsa uttantam sukham uttanta shuk. Many tremendous happiness. In, in Taitiri Upanishad, there is a gradation of gradation of happiness. I shall read to you. Suppose there is a young man, a noble young man, versed in the Vedas, the best of rulers, firm in body and strong. And suppose the whole world, full of wealth, is his. That is one measure human bliss, one unit. Human bliss, if you find a man is like that, Jesus is good, bad, all wealth, everything he has. Multiply that one unit human bliss with 100, then it will be one unit Gandharva bliss. The bliss of the human Gandharvas multiplied 100 times is one measure of the bliss of the celestial Gandharvas. Multiply 100 times, then it will be <coughs> Bliss of the manis, multiply 100 times, then it will be bliss of God, <laughs> multiply 100 times. <coughs> there is another kind of sacrificial gods, multiply 100 times, then it will be 30, one unit bliss of 33 gods, multiply 100 times. It is all, don't put too much attention, 33 or one, two, how many gods. <laughs> It will be one unit bliss of Indra. Multiply that with 100 times. It will be one unit bliss of Brihaspati. Multiply 100 times. It will be one unit bliss of Prajapati. Multiply 100 times. It will be one unit bliss of Brahma. It is a long... <laughs> In this way, they say that how the gradation of bliss comes. Here he says, Uttantam Sukham Ashnuti, maximum bliss one can think of. Bliss, the joy which we get in our day to day life, what kind of bliss is that? Matra. In Brihadarana Upanishad, I sometimes repeat that one. Esha is Saparama Gotihi, Esha is Saparama Shampat, Esha is Saparama Loka, Esha is Saparama Ananda, Etasya Ananda is Sanyani Bhutani Matra Upoji Bhanti. I can visualize these things. Esha is this is the goal, the Atman. This is the real abode, my home. This is the shampat. This is my real wealth, my treasure. This is my real bliss, ananda. And the joy, bliss which I get from day to day life, matra. That is sprinkle of that bliss. I sometimes, when I walk, I repeat this one. Isha is Saparamogoti. I know what is my goal. What is my goal? 
that Krishna is talking about, a Brahma Samasparsha, a touching. The moment you get touch of that God, Brahman, experience, that experience we never forget. Once you get a little experience of Samadhi, you will never forget in your life. Same thing, can you want the experience? Once you have, all that experience will stay with you forever. Same thing, spiritual experience. Sri Ramakrishna went farther. Do you know what did he say? That Brahmananda, puti lomku, every pore of your here becomes a sex organ. In one sex organ, the joy you get, the whole body, every pore of your human, your body becomes a sex organ. So much joy, so much bliss comes. I think nobody says that thing except Sri Ramakrishna. The gradation of bliss. Uttantam Sukhamashnuti. Unspeakable bliss comes to a yogi. But what are our obstacles? Patanjali says nine kinds of obstacles. Disease, mental laziness, doubt, mistake, laziness. Some people start yoga, then it stops. Raw false perception. There are many, many obstacles are there. But do you know what Patanjali says? Patanjali says, Ishara Purani Dhanadba. If you see the self-effort in the dry, this is not working. At that time, hold on God. Love God. Then life becomes easy. If you bring a little love, devotion in your life, your spiritual journey will be very comfortable and easy. Some people try to understand God through brain. Through reasoning, through reading the books. It does not work. If you really want to get joy in spiritual life, you will have to unite head and heart. Only head is not enough. Only heart is not enough. Combine both. That is the reason Sri Ramakrishna said, Jnana Mishra Bhakti. Jnana, knowledge. Mishra, mixed bhakti. Mixed jnana, knowledge and devotion should be blended in your life. Then you will really enjoy life. By eating a nice meal, we feel happy. Getting a kind word, we feel happy. There are so many occasions we get a small measure of happiness. Or sometimes in office, or you know, your success gives, gives you happiness. These are all little tidbits of happiness in human life. <clears throat> but consider the ocean of happiness, which is Brahman itself. Ananda Swarupa of the nature, of the nature of bliss, that these persons are in touch with that. We cannot even imagine it. But the truth is that many of the books in our tradition have said that you will feel infinite joy in every pore of the body when you realize God. Ananda Shagar. As sometimes Sri Ramakrishna used to say, I'm a Shachidananda Shagare Bhashi. I am floating in the ocean of Shachidananda. Next verse. Sarva bhuta samatmanam sarva bhuta nichatmani ikshati yujuktatma sarvatra samadarshana. This is the result of practicing meditation. With the heart concentrated by yoga, with the eye of evenness for all beings, he or she beholds the self in all beings and all beings in the self. This yogi, after having the experience of the Atman, what happens? In the Ishu Upanishad, we find three, two verses. 
यस्तु सर्वानि भूतानि आत्मन्यवान भविष्यति सर्वभूतेषु चात्पानं ततो न बिजुभुप्षते व्हेन यू एक्सपीरियंस दिस आत्मन दैट आत्मन परवेश इन एवरीथिंग इन एवरी बीइंग यू कैन नॉट हेट एनीबॉडी your hatred will go away from your mind forever whom should i hate that upanishad says tato na bijugupshate jasmin sarvani bhutani atmai va bhut bijanata tatra komo ha kashoka ekattam anupashata when you jasmin sarvani bhutan atman when you see this atman experience this atman who is new experience this atman what happens tatra kamo kashoka your moho a delusion will disappear forever shoka grief will go forever ekattam anupashyata if you see that oneness in everything there will be no more grief there will be no more delusion in your life that is the result of spiritual experience sri ram krishna one day asked his disciples what do you want from me so everybody was talking that master i want this experience that experience then sharada on the said master i want to see god in every being sarva bhute brahma darshan brahman i want to see brahman in every beings ore o to shesh katha re that is the last step in the spiritual life to see god in everything and every being however your eyes fall you see god that is the culmination of the vedantic experience sarvabhute brahma darshan <clears throat> holy mother was leaving jayambati and radhu had a pet cat and this brahmajari dear gan maharaj sometimes he used to beat the cat because sometimes the cat used to take away food from his plate or something he would eat <coughs> so mother was leaving jayambati so he told gan i am leaving please take care of this cat and make a little extra food for it otherwise this cat will go to the neighbor's house and those people will will blame us that we do not take care of our cats so please make an extra food for it for the cat then mother was thinking perhaps it did not go to his head do you know what did she say did she say dan please listen i also dwell in this cat bas holy mother was his guru immediately do you know what when holy mother left he was a vegetarian he would go to the market and buy some fish small fish he will cook mixing with rice he will feed the cat previously he was hitting and beating the cat now he started to worship the cat because mother says i i also dwell in the cat how this vedanta works i am just this is practical vedanta what a beautiful mother knew that you know if i only say just take care of the cat he will he will take care but when he said when she said that i also dwell in the cat bas it worked Shh. mother said that <clears throat> Well, how can I see? Do you see? Do you know what? How we can see in the infinite into the finite? Shami, I think it is Shami. Advaita Nanda gave an illustration. Early in the morning, you go to your garden, and you perhaps may see a dew drop or a drop of water on the on the leaf of a of on on your flower plant you see that crystal clear dew drop or the 
or water drop is there. And if you look intently in that drop, you can get a glimpse of the infinite blue sky. A little drop of water, you can see the whole sky is there. So this mind may be very small, but if it is clean, you will see that infinite, this Brahman is manifested there. That is the way the microcosm and macrocosm works. What is inside, that is outside. What is outside, that is inside. This whole, your mind is your whole universe. <laughs> the yogis, do you know what did they see? They see your cloth. Not only they see the cloth, they see the every thread, every fiber of the cotton in your cloth. So he sees both. <coughs> he sees the individual, he sees the whole. Whole and part, part and whole. That is the way yogi's mind works. <coughs> you are a, you have in a lot of a lot of treasure underground, but you do not know it, and you are very poor. But if you know there is hidden treasure in your home, you are you become rich. We are unaware of our wealth, the Atman which is within us. The Upanishad, the Guru teaches us. <coughs> how to find out that hidden treasure which is within us. And if you do know this Atman, you will be very rich. And if you believe, I don't, some people say, show me, I don't care for God. God also does not care for you either. <laughs> it happened to Shamiji. When Sri Ramakrishna Shamiji had all this financial problem, he came to Sri Ramakrishna, sir, if you can tell your mother, but she can help me. She can help me. Shami Sri Ramakrishna said, I told mother, mother said he doesn't believe in me. So why should I work for him? <laughs> but I do not know your mother. But go pray, then mother will give you everything you need. Very interesting. All right, after this today. Uma Satoma Sat Gamayo, Tamasoma Jyoti Gamayo, Mritturma Amritam Gamayo, Abira Virma Yedi, Rudra Jate Dokshinam Mukam, Tinamam Pahinityam. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Lead us from the unreal to the real. Lead us from darkness to light. Lead us from death to immortality. Light us through and through. And guide us evermore with thy loving presence. Peace, peace, peace be unto all.